Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag Monday. Let's get into it. Um, this one comes from Simon. Um, <laughs> Simon, as in um, EV Blog Forum moderator, Simon, who's also got uh, Simon's Electronics, who uh, carries some EV Blog uh, products, including the new 121 multimeter. So, what's he sent? Oh, cool. Thank you very much. Original and handmade in London at Time Art. There you go. Oh, awesome! Fantastic! Thank you very much. It's now face tracking on Marty. <laughs> Terrific! Thanks, Simon. Awesome. Is that a, like? Is it a mag? What is it? That is. I I thought that was a photo. It's not. Wow! It's a it's an actual, like it's a drawing. M. Kadov. There you go. Wow. That's. I wish I had the skills. I really do wish I had the artistic talent to. Uh, uh, draw, paint, something like that. It'd be awesome. Thanks, Simon. Oh, gotta stick that down. Hi to all my Swiss viewers, and thank you very much for Chris, uh, to Christian Muller for Mueller Muller for sending uh, this one in. And apparently, you're not allowed to use crocodile Dundee knives on it. Bugger that! <laughs> it's, I was warned that it is delicate, and I am not to use the knife to open it. But um. <laughs> I don't know where my other stuff is. <laughs> so all I've got is the knife. So I'm going to be very careful. Tongue at the right angle. That's the ticket. Tongue at the right angle and one eye. I don't see the drama. What you, it's got like, it's in huge padded things. What else? I was going to break the, uh, the bubble. I assume it's delicate. It's very nicely packed. Yeah, I, the, the risk there was busting these. It's not very satisfying. This is more satisfying. Mm. Nice big sheet of bubble wrap. Can reuse that. Always, re, always packing and shipping stuff. Jeez, what is it? Oh, oh, oh. Two in a row. Ah, oh, it's a Mr. Fusion. <laughs> oh, that is gold. Thank you very much. It's not an original, of course, but it is the same model that they used on the DeLorean. Um, <laughs> apparently, it's a coffee grinder from the German company Krupp's Model 223 for those playing along at home from the 1970s. Um, he could not find a white one, so I bought an orange famous and painted it white. Oh. Oh, yeah. Gee, she did a good job. Beauty. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see some orange on the bottom. There you go. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, apparently it was used in Alien. There you go, I'm gonna have to watch Alien, awesome movie. And of course there's the, uh, there's the one with Marty. Fantastic, and um, uh, Christian runs a YouTube channel, uh, Play With Junk. Awesome, I'll link it in down below, check it out. Oh, let's go straight to the pool room. Now this one I don't actually know who it's from and it didn't have mailbag on it. If you're gonna send stuff in, PO Box 7949, Borkham Hills, New South Wales, 2153, Australia, not Austria. Um, and yes, you can put that crazy Aussie bloke on it if you want. It does get to me. And they know me at the local post office. Um, and yeah, if you don't put mailbag on it, because I order so much stuff and get random stuff from supplies and stuff, if it hasn't got mailbag on it, I'm, I'm going to probably, unless it's obviously, it looks obviously like a mailbag, I'm going to open it. And that's what I did in this case. But then I realised it was, you know, I didn't go any further because I realised it was obviously a thing. So, um, what do we have? It's a fashion keyboard. Just what I always wanted. I want to be fashionable. And let's have a look. It is. Got some stickery feet. I have no idea what these things are. I got a whole bunch of those. It's a crow pie. Crow pie by Elecro. Awesome, thank you very much, Elecro. I assume it's Elecro who uh, sent me this, and it's a is a development board. 
I can read on the back. Equipped with a 7-inch display, they can help you learn Raspberry Pi in an easier way. With CrowPi, not only can you learn basic computer science, but also practice in programming and complete numerous electronics projects. Can I improve your knowledge and ability in hardware, blah, 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 built-in 7-inch touchscreen monitor, all in one, all that sort of jazz. So, there you go. That looks groovy. It's the advanced kit. Fantastic. Don't know how much it costs, but uh, there, there's a few of these things around. Uh, now, like, you know, Raspberry Pis and, like, putting them, you know, uh, I think, um, our try no, Farnells had, have one, Element 14, still call them Farnells, and, uh, I think J-Car have one, and Altronics probably, and they, um, uh, like, attaching, like, like, bundling together, like, screens and other sort of stuff, oh, look at that, it's got film for our protection, and they're bundling them, isn't that jazzy, carried around in your little crow pie, pie, Crow pie. I can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. That's, oh, look at that. Controller. All right, let's check it out up close. Well, isn't that sexy? <laughs> like fake carbon fiber and everything. Crow pie. Oh, look at that. It's like chrome finish. Oh. <laughs> let's have a look. No, it's seriously, it's really quite professional. <sighs> Hallelujah. Look at that! Wow! That is sex on a stick! Wow! What an assortment of stuff! We've got ourselves a Raspberry Pi over here. What one does it come with? Uh, isn't there a new one? It's a Model 3B Plus thingamabob. There you go. Good enough for Australia. Um, oh, look! <laughs> look, they've even provided a little right angle audio thing. Nice attention to detail. Wow! I'm sure you could find that somewhere on AliExpress, you know, a right angle. It, it, instead of the cable coming out here, it didn't fit. But that's fantastic. I love how they've incorporated the PCB into this case, and they've got standoffs. Yeah, there's nothing on the bottom. So obviously they've had the, uh, the standoffs integrated um, into the case, and it's got a whole bunch of stuff. Wow, that's, without reading the manual, oh, I can just look around here. What do we got? Got an RFID tag reader, fantastic. We got like a, a like a joysticky button thing. Not sure what's doing up here. It's not labeling. Maybe it's just some miscellaneous circuitry required for interfacing. Got some dip switches. Got to have dip switches. We got a little matrix keyboard, fantastic. Got a relay, terrific. We got a relay and an opto coupler and a screw terminal interface. Uh, what's that? Is that that's it. Well, we've got a touch sensor, but what's that? Is that some environmental sensor? DTH11. Yeah, I think it's one of those uh, thermistory uh, temperature things, is it? One of, you know, humidity temperature sensor or whatever. Oh, look, little uh, tilt um, mercury switch, I'm assuming. Uh, that goes to, does that go to an infrared module? Why do they have the pins? Why don't they have the infrared LEDs? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway, um, UART. Servos, ultrasonic, uh, transmitter and receiver. Looks like we've got some sort of uh, motion thing. Is that like an accelerometer in a dip? You usually don't get those in a dip 16. Um, sound, <laughs> beautiful. Um, yeah, we've got a buzzer and a speaker and a, oh, and a, uh, a oh, no, oh, that's a uh, purr. That's a passive infrared sensor. Nice, <laughs> vibration, all these, a seg um, the segment address. Decoder, nice. Of course, we've got our uh, seven-segment display with a time so you can do a clock or whatever. We've got a uh, LED matrix. I don't think that's an RGB one. I think it's just a regular one. Tiny little breadboard in there. A couple of miscellaneous uh, stuff around there, which you don't interface with. And uh, state LEDs on all of your um, outputs for your Raspberry Pi. But how do you interface with the outputs of your the io on your raspberry pi i don't i assume they don't come out to the breadboard no that breadboard looks like it's just stuck down so uh, maybe it, it's like are they all fixed as it go off to everything else i'd like to be i'd like to see that uh you know come off in a pin header so i don't know what's anyway don't know what's doing there and your regular um hitachi 2x16 LCD and it's CrowPie version 1.0. Oh, and uh, power protect as well. It looks like we've got some uh, external power. We've got, oh, that looks like a power switch for the whole thing and a USB interface. Well, that is 
thoroughly impressive, but it'd want to be for 260 Yankee bucks. And of course, I've got our uh, screen up there. What is that, like a 8-inch uh, screen, 7, 8-inch? Hi. Yeah, my immediate thought is like, okay, um, it's got all this cool, all this cool stuff you can play with, but like, where's the inner connects? I would have liked to have seen like a whole bunch of, you know, cables like jump flying leads that you could uh, jump over to the breadboard and, uh, you know, stuff like that and connect various stuff off. I guess all of this is um, hard uh, wired into the various I/O of the Raspberry Pi. Oh, and there's our HDMI too down in there, I like that, and it's buggering off under the board, comes up here over this uh, protected uh, cable loom here, and they've done a real good job here. Oh, it's got a camera. There you go. I think it uh, it must, no, the camera's not, there's a camera in there, but uh, not sure there's no cable hooked up. Hmm. Anyway, it's available in black and blue, and they extol the virtues of, <laughs> the fastener and hinge is made of iron. Iron Man. Yeah, anyway, it's a very nice little uh, blurb that they've got with this thing. And uh, this is just the uh, quick start guide. So there you go, you got the Raspberry Pi pinout. Touch sensor, aha, there you go. That's where they're uh, connected to. Yep, they are hard connected, um, which is a bit of a shame. I would have liked to have seen, uh, you know, the ability to put uh, jumper wires and all that sort of jazz on there. But uh, still, it's, a, it's very impressive, and that's what I've got. I've got one of these uh, fashion keyboards. <laughs> cool. And I'm going to assume that it is all uh, pre-programmed and ready for me to power up. So oh, I'll give it a whirl. And it's all about the uh, material that comes with it as well. And you've got a Crow Pie Lessons PDF. I'll link in all this down below. And they've got 21 different lessons. So we'll take a uh, quick squiz at uh, that as well. But... And the price for this thing is uh, 230 Yankee bucks. Um, if you want shipping to Australia, that's pretty pricey at uh, 47, uh, well, Yankee bucks yet again. So, hmm. And by the way, I noticed that uh, it doesn't actually have, doesn't tell you what the voltage is there or whether or not it's, you know, you've got to assume it's center positive, but they don't tell you any details. Yeah, that's a bit of an oversight. All right, you smart young kiddies are probably screaming at me. These are Minecraft blocks. You cut them out and you fold them and yeah, okay. And these aren't little stick on feet or whatever. These are little RFID tags. You stick on the bottom of these and then you sit your cube on there and you play your Minecrafts. All right, let's power it up. I got my funky wireless keyboard and mouse here. And let's see if we can power it with a... Hey! Yay! Come on! Raspberry Pi! We're gonna be in like Flint! Welcome to the Raspberry Pi des desktop. Where we're going, we don't need roads. SSH is enabled and the default password for the Pi has been changed. This is a security risk. Please log on as Pi user and run blah blah blah. Okay, we're in, and the great thing about this is this is going to be great for uh, Sagan, who is seven, but he's already into uh, scratch coding. He hasn't done it, he's only done it on, uh, you know, PCs, but he's never done it on a Raspberry Pi. So apparently, um, Elecro provide scratch examples for all this sort of stuff. So you can interface in your scratch as a programming language, like a sort of like a flowcharty, block diagramy programming type uh, system and apparently you can run scratch programs on here and interface with all these cool sensors. This is going to Sagan's going to have fun with this. So um, it comes installed. Okay, we've got Minecraft Pi, Mathematica. Cool. Anyway, we've got Scratch and Scratch Two. I don't know the difference between Scratch Two. I assume Scratch Two is big and better than Scratch. So anyway, I don't know. I wonder if it actually comes with the examples or not. I don't know pre-installed but you can certainly uh they're all part of the lessons and stuff like that you can download from elecro so i think you're really getting your 230 yankee bucks worth in this thing um with all the educational stuff scratch geez the screen's pretty small like you know but for young kids <laughs> it's gonna be fine no looks like they don't have them pre crow crow pie pro, yeah, crow pie python because no, I 
Don't think it uh, uses Python. Scratch, it may in the background. I don't know anything about it. And yeah, we're connected up to the Wi-Fi, no problems, because it's just a Raspberry Pi. And here we go, we've got the uh, Crow Pi Lessons with Scratch 2.0. And you can control the vibration, blinking, all that sort of stuff. So all the documentation is uh, here. It's, I, maybe it is on it somewhere, but it would have been nice if it all came preloaded. But of course, you can just go to the uh, website and download it. It's just a small thing. Sorry if the uh, video is horrible on this, but anyway, because it's a standard Raspberry Pi and a Scratch, I believe, comes with support for Raspberry Pi, or at least, it, you know, when it's on the Raspberry Pi, you just go into more blocks here, add an extension, and Pi GPIO. Nice. So that should give us access to, yep, the GPIO stuff. So we can actually start, like, accessing the individual I.O. pins and then talk to the sensors. Right, well, I'm following the example here, and I don't know anything about Scratch, so I'm a dummy. Um, so Scratch with GPIOs, unfortunately, it, it's not the best. If you're starting from Scratch, <coughs> I'm here all week, um, with Scratch, then, like, it's not the best example. Like, it just, you know, I can't get it to do this sort of stuff. It doesn't tell you which panels do what in here, so it's not really a... A, like a beginner's tutorial to scratch, so to speak. Like I can't get this, um, you know, I can get it to mate with this variable here. I've created the variable lead, but I can't get the GPIO to come up with lead and things like that. It doesn't tell you how to run it. It doesn't tell you which what this panel does. It doesn't tell you what this over here does. It doesn't tell you, you know, any of that. It doesn't tell you where to find them. Like in here, I sort of had to, you know, figure that out myself. It's not hard, you know, you just cl click around several times and you can find all the different stuff. But, um, yeah, it's not the best uh, absolute beginners from scratch tutorial. Oh, I kind of figured it out on my own. Look, you d <laughs> to run it, apparently you just click in here. There you go. Lead. I don't have to do that variable because I'm not using any uh, the lead variable because I couldn't figure it out how to, to do that. Anyway, um, GPIO pin 18 is, and you'll see it light up down here. Where is it? Oh, see, it's flat. Why is it flashing like that? Look, why is it? I don't know what's going on there, but apparently that is connected. <whistles> Turns on for one second. I don't know why it's flashing. Anyway, um, yeah, I got it going, but yeah, I don't think it's the best uh, beginner, you can't just, I don't think you could give this to a beginner and expect them to follow this example precisely and just get it working without any drama. Although the documentation looks good, um, but just not as thorough as I'd like it, um, especially for a beginner scratch programmer. Oh, didn't press a record button, just done the whole spiel. Anyway, look, you get a bunch of stuff with it. You get the uh, two controllers to play your Minecraft thingy, um, and you get a remote control and uh, extra RFID. You get a touchscreen pen, because yes, it is a touchscreen thing. You get a little screwdriver as well for the, uh, that's a nice touch for the um, screw terminals. And there's the infrared uh, receiver there. You just plug that into those pins. Don't know why they just didn't have it sold onto the board, but I guess you want to orient it and move it around different angles. And some button caps and stuff like that. Ah, oh, Raspberry Pi heatsink. We should stick that on. <laughs> um, headphones, and we get a uh, servo and DC uh, motors so that you can just play around with those. So that's actually very impressive. Like, the whole thing is very impressive. I think, does the experimenter kit come with the keyboard and the mouse and everything else? Um, I'm not sure, but anyway, it... <laughs> I love the concept of this thing. It is absolutely fantastic. It's executed reasonably well, but as I said, I would have liked to have seen like the software like boot up and like can't like the manuals on there and it just all automatically opens or something like that. And the instructions, as I said, for the scratch, not exactly the best for the first timers, but all that stuff can be uh, improved. But apart from that, like a package, like you carry it around. Uh, with you, you know, kids can like sort of, you know, carry it around on holidays, on school, wherever you're doing and uh, take it over to your friend's house and have a play with it. It's it's great and it's got a huge range of sensors. So I'm very impressed. Um, that one, I think, it, it pretty much gets the thumbs up. That's a real nice bit of kit. And I think they got uh, like 40 bucks off at the moment. So you can get it for like uh, 200 bucks, I believe. But it's, it's a little bit pricey, but uh, it's a nice, well put together kit.
This one's from Wong Wing Ho. Thank you very much, Wong Wing. Or is it Wing Wong? Um, Heng Ping, what? Heng Gang Hong Man Shi Li Lu Hao Seng Cheng Gong Yi Gu. What? I, I have to show you this. Not spoil it. That's just insane. What is that? That address is nuts. So, is it a joke e uh, eBay, you know, $2 farting novelty gadget? A lot of people send those in, you know, $2 delivered on eBay, or is it actually a thing? Find out. Oh, jeez, padded well. Jeez, getting good padding today. Got a USB cable. What is that? That's, that's 3D printed. Check that out. What on earth is that? Has it got LEDs in there? Okay, we've got a whole bunch of number, laser cut, Printed numbered acrylic things. Do, no, they don't go on there. Maybe they, they've got something to do with this. Oh, it's a Kickstarter. It's a Kickstarter from, I guess it's the company name, is it? 8x8x8item.com. Or one word with X's in the 8. I'll link it in down below. Um, thank, I assume, we, yeah, Wing Ho, thank you very much. Um, it wasn't a random eBay thing. We sell awesome gadget. <laughs> We manufacture autumn awesome gadget. <laughs> we design awesome gadget. Welcome small quantity wholesale. So there you go. They're like a design and manufacturing company. If you want them to do it, is it a Dixie tube? Like, anyway, let's have a look at It's a lead light up ring thing. Looks kind of, I don't know, it was futuristic in the 70s, maybe? <laughs> That was their vision of the future, you know, where we'll all have this would be a sort of some sort of a fancy memory storage device, some sort of computing or some sort of energy device or something like that. So it's a bunch of acrylic sheets. I presume it just lights up different colors. Okay, let's check out his stuff. This is the Museo. Um, it was a Kickstarter, um, apparently, and it's like. <laughs> A wobbly tower thing, and it looks like it's got a once again 3D print that looks 3D printed to me. The base of it, and you stick some USB in there, and I suspect it's going to light up. So, hello. Oh, my battery bank helps if I turn my battery bank on. Hey, whoa, whoa, psychedelic man. That's uh, yeah, that's what I expected. I expected to. to Flash in time with music. So you sit that on your your bedside table or your coffee table or whatever, and it. I don't, I've got to peel the top off. That looks pretty daggy. Um, but the, yeah, that's kind of funky. It's obviously got different modes. There we go. That's peak hold. Peak hold. It's a peak hold. Peak. 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 Hold. Oh. 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 Wee. Hello. Hello world. <laughs> anyway, it's got all these different modes. There you go. Cute. And this thing had me baffled for a bit until I figured out what it was. Now, you can see that there's LEDs in there, and that's what I couldn't figure out, like why. And then we've got these sheets here that's, as I said, they have all these digits on them. And you break them out, and it's you're going to, these are going to plug into there, and it's going to form a a fake lead-based Nixie tube display with the different, each lead lights up here to go into using this as a light pipe to light up the segment. <laughs> it's a novel idea, but I, I can't help but think, oh, no, give me the real Nixie, but geez, that one's a bit how you're doing, isn't it? Jeez. <laughs> the seven, it's got little things on there. Does it doesn't need to have that, does it? No. Anyway, um, yeah, you plug them in, and <laughs> it's going to be a poor man's Nixie tube display. Uh, so I haven't plugged them all in yet, because it's actually <laughs> quite a bit of work to do that. You've got to peel them all off and stick them in. But that's the idea. There you go. It's just like 
and just like a Nixie tube, it's going to have the different layers. Oh man, did I my out of focus? I'm fixed focus. Jeez. But you can see the concept is just like a regular Nixie tube, how they have the different layers in there and they light up. And it, yeah, there's a bit of like interference from the ones in the front of the ones at the back light up and stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's designed to simulate it. So let's let's plug it in and see if it does anything for this one digity. Ah, oh, can barely even see it. I'm going to turn the lights out. Well, sorry, but I'm not impressed. It's actually better to one, zero. See, nine at the back, eight is sort of hard. The ones at the back are hard to see. It's counting down and yeah, nah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fail. It just it just ain't the same. But hey, I'll give that an A for originality though. <laughs> so thank you very much One Wing Ho for uh, sending those in. Uh, check out the website. They do have like up to I think 12 by 12 lead matrix RGB matrix cubes and lots of flishy flashy light gadgety things. Cool. I know all my viewers in Hong Kong, in particular Mr. Ping. Winning name. Um, once again, it didn't have mailbag on it, but I like opened up, could, took a quick peek, and went, "That's got to be mailbag." I'm presuming. So, anyway, let's have a look. There is a note which I didn't read. No, it's not a note. It's an invoice thing. And Mr. Ping. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I used to know someone whose first name was Ping. Female. Ping. Fantastic, if you're a nerd. Um, what do we got? Wow, we've got lots of little boards. We've got, got a breadboard with a camera and a screen. Don't know what, uh, don't know what's doing there. It looks like it's just an interface to it. Looks like all this joins together. All right, let's have a look at all this. Is there any documentation with this? There's no documentation. It's a Sipede development kit board thing with absolutely no documentation. I might have to check my email and um, check the website and, and see what's what, or we can just power it up. Aha, uh -huh. turns out this uh, Cypede, Cypede uh, board and the module here, the uh, Internet of AI, it's an artificial intelligence module. It's the first 64-bit artificial intelligence module apparently and it's on Indiegogo. It's got three days left. They've met their goal. Um, I think this is just some demo platform or something they've uh, put together. So uh, USB-C on there. Let's power this thing up. So yeah, it's designed for edge computing, artificial intelligence module for edge computing. I have no idea what edge computing is. I'm sure someone will enlighten me. Right, let's power this up. Whoa, 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 there we go. Um, d d oh, yep, what, d d what's it doing? Was there, d it, it's some, doing some sort of image thing, sorry, um, some sort of image thing. I don't get it. It's not voice, is it? Anyway, it's the Dan Doc. <laughs> okay, Dan, is it Dan's Doc? Fair enough. Um, boot. Switch a couple of switches on there, but it's like it's obviously doing something. I don't know what. Oh, I think what it is is it's a spatial microphone array. I'm on this side of the camera. These mics here, look, these are little microphones around here. So if I move to this side of the camera over here, yep, it's following me around. And if I go over to here like this, yeah, it's following my voice. So yeah, that's cool. It's a spatial microphone array and it's look it's you know there's like a density kind of you know map telling us where it's coming from there you go it's kind of cool so i'm sure there was a lot of processing that went into that microphone one and here's a camera module uh presumably doing a thing i presume the new things under there somewhere um the new chipsetty thing anyway let's power it up and see what we get oh <laughs> Demo one. Oh, hello. Hi. And yeah, all right. So it's like it, that's real time. What is it? Oh, it's facial tracking me. It's facial tracking. It's now mouth tracking. 
What's it doing? <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, cool. So like an artificial intelligence module for um, the image processing, sound processing, all that sort of stuff. So I'm sure, you know, that requires a lot of, a uh, lot, lot of grunt to do that on a little micro is a winner winner chicken dinner. And this uh, rather convoluted looking one, again, we've got a camera, got a screen, and we've got some servo motors. So it's going to tilt, I presume, it's going to track, track me as I move around. Let's have a look. Oh, welcome to Maxfee. Maxfee. Hello. Yep. Yep. We've been very well welcomed. Um, to... <laughs> I expected like it to do a similar sort of image processing thing, but use the motors to track an object or track a a thing. So there's a little there's the dev board down in there, but it doesn't seem to be welcome. It's not a touch. Hello. Uh any buttons on it? Nope. Little microphone in there? Dunno, but um Ah oh, It's a disappointment. <laughs> Come on, do something. So I'm not sure there's uh, much else I can do with that except uh, link to the Indiegogo down below if you're interested in like a like a high grunt processing. It's a dual core Risk V thingamabob and AI inside. It's probably got some artificial intelligence, um, uh, maybe some dedicated hardware or something in it. Or something like that, but uh, yeah, it's a uh, Risk V RV64 GC, 400 to 600 megahertz, and it does some like you know some fancy real-time grunty processing of audio and video and stuff like that. So link it in down below, check it out. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are uh, would be very interested in such a. Uh, like a like a high speed you know artificial I don't know the artificial intelligence side of things does it have like you know software or uh, routines or something to you know handle all this fancy stuff I don't know check out the Indiegogo down below thanks for sending that in so if you like mailbag please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot as always discuss down below and you can uh, check me out on Patreon all that sort of jazz and yes i've got the 121 multimeter back in stock and i accept crypto donations and you know all that sort of stuff still selling my merch i'm hopefully trying to get my uh t-shirt store my teespring store integrated with youtube so maybe it'll pop up on this video or below it or somewhere i'm trying to get the integration working on uh that happening again so to get my t-shirts back through uh teespring so you know I've got to chill all this stuff to stay in business Catch you next time.